Yogi Momo. I don't know if you are keeping track. Um, if you need a copy of this, feel free to get one on YouTube and download your own copy. But you are on day seven, and the focus today is high crescent lunge. And we're going to do lots of things to really tap into the power of your upper body, open up your heart, and continue fostering the spirit of gratitude. Whether you're coming here for the first time or you really are on day seven, it's going to be great. Lots of good things coming your way. Hello and welcome to our next Vinyasa Flow class as part of our gratitude series. Today's focus is crescent lunge and so uh, we are really going to work on getting the arms, the chest, the upper back really strengthened so that as we begin to open up our heart, our physical body will follow in just right along. Okay, that sounds stupid. Hang on. Hello and welcome to today's Vinyasa Flow. I hope that you have had a wonderful day. And I want you just to affirm yourself for carving out a few minutes today to spend some time on your mat. So if you will go ahead and make your way to a seated position, we're going to get started. We're going to do lots of things with the upper body today, with the chest, with the arms, with the upper back. Really getting some nice rotation in those shoulders so that whatever stress, whatever tension you've been holding on to right here, as we open the heart, we're going to let it all go. So we're actually going to start off in a seated position. I want you just to bring your hands to your knees. Just sit nice and tall where you are, but even though you're sitting up tall, don't hunch your shoulders. Just let them go into their pockets and then close your eyes. And the first thing I need you to do is just tell yourself, I deserve these minutes, pulled away from the world, focused on me. And when you tell yourself that, maybe you'll actually start to believe it. I deserve these minutes, pulled away from the world, focused on me. Just let your shoulders relax where they are as your neck grows long. Begin to feel the strength instead of the stress throughout the upper body. And open up your eyes. We're going to use our seated cat cow as a way to integrate ourselves with our breath. And so the way it's going to work is we're going to inhale into a cow pose. And so we're going to lift our chest. Our head's going to tip back. And then we're going to exhale into cat as we arch the back and we roll our chin toward our chest. Doesn't mean the chin's going to touch. It's just going to go that direction. So you're going to move the bones of the neck back and forth and move the spine as well. And we're gonna get all the parts of our body that we need to use today nice and loosened up. So sit up nice and tall, hands are on the knees. When we breathe in, we breathe in from our belly. So here we go, breathe in, look up, lift the chest. Exhale, roll the shoulders toward the ears, bring the chin toward the chest. Inhale, drop the shoulders, look up, chest goes up. Exhale, coming into seated cat, arching the back. Inhale, breathe and look up. Exhale, roll into cat. Two more. Inhaling to cow. Exhaling to cat. One more. Inhale, look up. Exhale, look toward the belly button. Come back to a neutral spine, but keep the breath going. We want our inhales and our exhales to be the same length, which helps to create that balance that we're searching for inside of us. So from where you are seated, we're going to take our hands, bring them behind your back. You're going to clasp your hands together. So find a spot that's kind of comfortable for you. They might touch the ground. They might touch your bottom, your low back, wherever they are. Maybe they're hanging out in the air. We're going to do that same exact motion, but this time whenever we roll into cat, we're going to actually begin to fold forward and bring the arms over our head. So here we go. Inhale, look up. Shoulders go back. Exhale, rolling into cat, bring the head forward all the way as far as you can. Let the arms come over the head and we're going to hang out here. Even though we're holding the pose, we're not holding the breath. So the arms are beginning to lift up toward the ceiling as far as your body will allow. So you listen to your shoulders, listen to your upper back. When it tells you that's where you stop, I want that to be where you hold. Keep breathing. We're not trying to bring our head to the floor. We're just trying to bow forward until our chest, our tummy, our shoulders tell us that's where we stop. So becoming aware of where your body is today, that's the best gift that you can give yourself. We've got two more breaths right here. And on your next inhale, start to drop the arms, bring yourself slowly up, head tips back, chest lifts, and then exhale, release the arms. All right, we're gonna roll those shoulders. So we're gonna go backwards first. Here we go, roll the shoulders back. Big circles, just like there's a rotation or a wheel in those shoulders. Moving the joint a couple more times. And now let's roll them forward. 
Elbows kind of circling with us. Just a couple more. Roll those shoulders. This should feel really nice. All right, so then take your right hand, put it on your left knee. Take your left hand just right beside your bottom and then sit up nice and tall. Keep that chest open. Inhale here. Exhale, twist and look to the left. Keep breathing. Chest is starting to open. Come back to center. Let's bring the left hand to the right knee. Right hand comes right next to you. Sit up nice and tall. Inhale here. Exhale, twist and look to the right. We're not going into a very deep twist here. We're just allowing the upper body to start to move. Hold the pose, but keep the breath. And come back. All right, we're coming into all fours. Thread the needle is next, and if you've not done thread the needle ever or in a long time, it's one of those poses you're really going to love it. It feels really, really nice. So we're going to start with our right hand. So we're in all fours. You're on your knees. You're looking toward your hands. I want you to inhale, sweep the right arm up toward the ceiling slowly as you look up, and then exhale, bring that right hand back down. We're going to thread it underneath the left arm so that the right palm stays up, the right ear comes down, so your bottom's kind of sticking up. That's how it should be. Now walk those left fingers up as high as you can. So you're on the right shoulder, the right side of the face. The left fingers are stretched up so you're gonna feel that really nice extension through the shoulder, maybe even through the armpit. And I want you to close your eyes right here. We don't think so much about what we're doing when our eyes are closed, but when the eyes are open and they're trying to send us more messages about what we should and we could and we can't, you just close your eyes and silence those messages. Breathe here. Feeling that beautiful stretch from the left armpit all the way into the left fingers. One more breath. And then start to walk the left fingers back towards your face. And now we're going to use our breath. So we inhale, unthread the right, sweep it up. Exhale, put it back down. Hopefully you feel a really nice movement in that right shoulder. Let's do the other side. So here you are, all fours. Inhale, sweep the left arm up, gaze goes to the ceiling. Exhale, bring the left hand down, turn the palm up as you thread it underneath the right. So left ear comes down, left shoulders on the mat. Walk those right fingers as high as you can above your head. Bottom is sticking up toward the ceiling. Close your eyes. So that left palm is up. You're on the left shoulder, but there's no pressure on it. It's just touching the mat, supporting you, balancing you. Left temple is resting, and you are breathing. Keep those right fingers stretched high above the head. Hold here. One more breath. Start to walk the right fingers back towards your face, and on the inhale, we unthread the left. It sweeps up and lower it back down. So then from here, we're gonna come into what we call melting heart. So we're still in all fours. Take your palms, knees stay the same. Take the palms, walk them up as high as you can. Maybe they go off the mat, wherever they land, fingers are spread wide, and then allow your chest to melt down toward the earth. Allow your forehead to come down if it can. If having the forehead down is too much, you just stay right here, you can look toward your hands. Whatever works for you. But we're melting our heart toward the earth because what we're going to do in the next few minutes is we're really going to open it up. So we're giving ourselves a little nurturing. While we're stretching those arms, you feel that physical stretch through both armpits, across the upper back, across the shoulders. Forehead is down. Two more breaths here. And then gently begin to lift the gaze. Slide the right hand back, slide the left hand back. From here, let's kind of just swish those shoulders side to side. So just push them up and back, and up and back. A little restoration before we come to standing. Couple more swishes, back and forth. All right, let's come to standing. Our focus today is crescent lunge. Crescent lunge not only empowers the upper body, but it is gonna work the legs as well. We're gonna make sure that our core is engaged. So before we start, I want you to think about your core muscles. So just stand tall wherever you are. We're gonna find our way into mountain pose. And what I want you to do is I want you just to put your hands on your belly. This is what you think of when you think of your core. That's just the average person. We think it's our abs, our six pack, or the lack of it. But it's your belly. But all I want you to do is take your hands, 
Roll them around to your sides. Just let them rest. Doesn't matter what the flesh feels like. You just feel what's, whatever's right here. Those are your obliques. They are part of your core. You can't just strengthen yourself and balance and extend all from the belly. We need the obliques. Now I want you from where you are, take the hands, slide them around. So now the fingers are going down and you're putting the palms of your hands or the base of your hand in your low back. This is also a part of your core. All of these muscles, they form this beautiful corset right here around your midsection. These muscles are where we pull all of our balance from. We stabilize the core to begin to lift the upper body. We stabilize the core to ground into the lower body. The core is incredibly important. So all those planks, all those things that we do to really focus on the core, it's because it's necessary. We're not trying to get a six pack. We're trying to become strong, empowered, rooted and stable people. All right, so here we go. We are ready to flow. So wherever you are in mountain pose, you're facing the top of your mat, arms are alongside you, feet are stacked underneath those hip bones, shoulders are stacked over the hips, arms are alongside, fingers spread wide, look straight ahead. This is mountain, Tadasada. And now let's get ready to move. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Hands meet at the top. Exhale, draw the hands down as you bow, coming into a forward fold. Now from here, I want you to bend those knees as much as you need to. When you feel those hamstrings start to really stretch, they're telling you, okay, that's enough. Put a little bend in your knees and maybe you can stretch a little more. But you listen to your body. I want your head to hang down and you, look in, you are looking at your knees. Just hang out right here. It doesn't matter how deep your fold is. doesn't matter what's happening right here in the chest and the belly. I just need your head hanging down. The top of the head is opened up. That's where we hold our stress, right there in the crown. And when the head is hanging down, you can't hang on to it anymore. It is flowing out. So maybe the hands are touching. Maybe you're grabbing opposite elbows. But I need you just to hang. Give the low body a chance to stretch. Circulations, doing all kinds of good things. We're stimulating organ function. One more breath right here. Now release the elbows. Slide your hands onto your shins and look up halfway. So right here, we're gonna hold for a second. We're not pressing into the shins, we're just lightly putting our hands there. Push the shoulders through, or excuse me, push the chest through the shoulders and just look up right here. Straight ahead. Feel that lengthening down the backs of your legs. And now bend your knees, plant your hands, step your right foot back. Step your left foot back, and I know you're thinking, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Breathe with me. Inhale. Exhale. Put the knees down. Keep the balls of the feet on the mat so the heels are still up. You're in plank. This is plank. So is this. You're looking at your hands. Breathe. Fingers are spread wide. Spine is long. And now keep the elbows tucked close by your body. Lower everything you've got. Chest comes down. Belly comes down. Flip your feet over. Now from here, take the hands, put them behind your back, just like we began when we were seated. So you've clasped the hands together. Inhale, look up, pull the hands away from your bottom right here. Just barely look up. Just lift the hands right above the bottom. Hold and breathe. So our chest is pretty much still on the mat. We're just lifting right here in the upper, uh, the upper chest, right here in your clavicle, your collarbone. Rolling those shoulders back. Lower, release the hands. Put them back under the shoulders, fingers are spread wide. Curl the toes, and as you exhale, we push back to our knees, lift our hips, down dog. When you come into down dog, you take about a little half step forward. Your feet are about two fists, so I could put two fists in between the feet. Keep your heels up for these first couple down dogs. Don't try to push them down. In fact, keep your heels up for all your down dogs. There's not a rule about the heels, but I need you looking at your legs. Head is hanging. Don't look at your hands, but notice if your fingers are spread wide. If they're not, spread them out. You need the weight to distribute evenly or else your wrists are not going to be happy about this. Keep breathing. And now look at your hands. Start to walk the feet forward. So it's like you're walking up towards your hands. Remember the half lift. Put the hands on the shins. Slide and look. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Sweep the arms. We inhale, rise up. Hands meet, exhale, draw them down. I know you're feeling it. Legs are already talking, upper body, low back, all the muscles that you need. And that one sun out, we started to activate them. Let's do it again, exactly the same way we did it the first time. Stand tall, mountain pose, look straight ahead. Even here as your hands are hanging alongside you, you still feel the energy 
the prana, the life flowing through your arms. It's an active pose. Keep breathing. And here we go. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Gaze goes to the ceiling. Exhale, begin to bow and hinge. Let all the air out. Hands fall down. And now slide them onto your shins. Look up halfway. Nice and slow movements. Bend the knees. Take the hands down. Step the right foot back. Step the left. You can do this. Stay in plank. One breath. That's all I need. Inhale. And then as you exhale, drop the knees. Stay on the balls of the feet, though. I want you to feel what it's like to have the weight distributed from the, the base of your hand, the backs of your knuckles, everything supporting you right here. Shouldn't be any pressure on your wrist. And now as you exhale, keep the elbows tight. Lower the chest. Flip your feet over. Let's take the hands behind the back again. Clasp them together. When you inhale, start to look up. Take the hands away from your bottom. Hold here. Rolling the shoulders back toward each other. Gaze is straight ahead. You've got this. One more breath. And as you exhale, we lower the gaze, we lower the hands. Unclasp them. Put the hands under your shoulders. Elbows are close by your body. Curl the toes so we're on the balls of the feet. And on your next exhale, push back to your knees. Lift your butt. We're in down dog. Take that little step in. Spread the fingers wide. Get yourself set and breathe. Eyes go to the hands. Walk those feet forward. Hands on the shins. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees. Sweep the arms. Rise up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Back into your mountain pose. All right, if you need to get a drink, do that. Take a break, whatever you need to do. And then we are going to meet back in mountain pose. Stand tall right here. Let's get our breath set. We're not going to flow this time. We're going to do a little work with the upper body. Let's take the hands behind the back again. Clasp those fingers. Notice how your shoulders start to roll back toward each other. If they don't, you let them go that way. Pull them back. Now inhale, look up. And exhale. While you're looking up, let's begin to lift those hands away from the bottom. Coming into that little baby back bend right here. So as you're breathing, you're folding into it a little more. Your low back is going to tell you when to stop. Hold right here. Chest is open. If at any point the low back's talking too much, take the gaze away from the ceiling and come back to an upright position, but keep the arms away from your bottom. So just changing the gaze, that's what really increases the work for your low back. Stand tall, no matter which pose you're in, hands away from the bottom, and come back, release the hands. Now we're gonna do what's called cactus arms. So you're gonna stand tall. When we get to cactus arms, we're going to lift our arms into the air and then we're going to pull the elbows back toward our midline of our back. So the elbows are going to go toward each other. You're really going to feel the expansion right here in the center of your body. Stand tall. Here we go. Sweep the arms on the inhale. And then as you exhale, bend the elbows, spread the fingers wide, pull the elbows back toward each other. Cactus. Inhale, push the hands up. Exhale, draw the elbows back toward each other. Two more. Inhale, push the arms up. Exhale, cactus. One more. Exhale, cactus. All right, let's move into a flow. Inhale, push the arms up. And when you're ready, exhale, hinging from the hips. Let's bow down, fold. Hands come down, then slide them onto the shins. Look up halfway. Take the hands down. We're stepping back to plank. We're keeping with the knees. Hold the plank for one full breath. Now start to drop the knees. Inhaling here. Exhale, lower the whole body. Flip the feet over. Hands are staying where they are. Inhale, lift up into cobra. Trying to pull your chest off the mat so now it's just your belly button that's staying down. Press the hands down. Hold here, but keep breathing. Curl the toes. Exhale, down dog. Push those hips up. Gaze goes to the legs. When you're in down dog, your knees can stay bent, your heels can stay up. The only thing that you've got to be focused on is your gaze. So as you're looking at your legs, it's helping the length of your spine to be long from the tailbone, through the neck, through the crown of the head. Keep breathing. 
We don't want to round our back here. We want to lengthen the spine. All right, from here, we're going to keep the left leg down, lift the right leg slowly, bend the right knee, bring the right foot through. And if you can't bring it through, once it starts to come, grab the right calf, put it up. Once you're here, drop your left knee, turn your left foot over. So first, let's check our form. Right knee stacked over right ankle. Once you're here, rise up. Arms go overhead, coming into a low lunge. This helps to prepare us for crescent lunge, which is where we're headed. I want you to feel the stretch in that left quad. Those quad muscles right there in the thigh and the left leg. Now take the hands behind the back, just like we've been doing. Clasp the fingers, and as you inhale, pull them away from your body. Look up a little higher. And again, if looking up is too much of a strain, just look straight ahead, but keep pulling the hands away from the bottom. We're stabilizing our core as our left shin, our right foot, keep us rooted to the ground. Release the hands. Let's put them on the ground so they're around the right foot. Turn the left toes over. Lift the left knee. I want you to very gently kick the right leg back out and then lower it. You're back in down dog. We're going to do the left side and then we're going to break for a child's pose. So here we go. Lift the left leg. Bend the left knee. If you can pull it through, pull it through. If not, you bring it and then you take the back of that left calf. You bring it forward. Hands are around the left foot. Drop your right knee. Turn your right foot over. Once you feel stabilized, arms come up, low lunge, palms facing each other, breathe, hands go behind the back, clasp the fingers, pull the hands away from your bottom and look up. Right shin, left foot stabilizing us into the earth, rib cage expanding. Release the hands, bring them around the left foot. But this time what I want you to do is just take the left knee back so now you're back in tabletop. Keep your knees together, push your bottom back toward your heels, let the hands stretch high up. Chest comes down, bow the head, child's pose. So we've got a closed leg child's pose, so the chest is just following toward the thighs. Maybe it's touching it, maybe it's not. But I want your head just to hang down. Let child's pose be your restoration pose. Not because you're tired, but because you need to reconnect to your breath. Remember, we want a balanced inhale and exhale. If you balance, I mean, if you breathe in two beats, you breathe out two beats. If you breathe in four, you breathe out four. So try to make sure that the length of the inhale matches the length of the exhale. That's the first step to you feeling balanced. Couple more breaths here. Now start to lift your head. Bring all your body parts back into tabletop. So hands are on the mat, knees are on the mat. We're gonna finish this flow. Curl your toes, lift your hips. Eyes are on the feet or on the legs. And now take the eyes to the hands, walk those feet up. Hands on the shins, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sweep the arms, rise up. And exhale down. All right, we are ready for crescent lunge. So we've been doing a lot of work in this gratitude series and whether you are here for the first day or you're actually on track with us, I think it's day seven. Um, I want you to understand that inside your body is all the energy that you need to, to do everything you wanna do in life. But what tends to happen is the world is busy, your schedule is packed, people need you, they demand things of your time, the world is chaotic, it is uncertain, it's noisy. All those things block our energy. We get headaches, we get tension in our neck, we get physical pain or problems in our, in our gut right here. All of those things that manifest themselves physically, it's because all the energy that we should be tapping into has become blocked. The uncertainty of the world, the expectations that others have on us. And so when we do our yoga practice, you think you're showing up on your mat for physical benefit, and you are. You are giving new muscle memory. You are oxygenating those muscles. You are empowering yourself from the inside out. But what you're also doing is you are unblocking whatever has been blocked of your subtle energy. And every focus that we've had for this month of gratitude or these 30 days that we're spending together is all on the green heart chakra. It's right here in the center of your chest and it's the bridge between these three energies below and these three energies above. And when our heart is blocked, guys, you can't have the flow of energy. It's gonna, the, the, the block will settle here in our neck and the tension will come. Or it will settle here in our forehead, it'll settle here in our gut. The heart is the key. 
And every time we do poses like what we're about to do in crescent lunge, we open it up and it's going to feel overwhelming and you're going to think, oh, I can't hold this. Yes, you can. Unblock the energy. Tell the world to be quiet. All right, here we go. Stand tall. This is our last flow. We're going to hold crescent lunge on each side for just a little bit. Not just a few breaths, don't worry, to really feel the impact of what that pose has for us. Here we go. Inhale, sweep the arms up. On the exhale, bow and hinge. Hands come to the shins. Look up halfway. Hands go down. Step back to plank. Hold here. Remember, one breath. You can do this. Drop your knees. Keep holding. Fingers are spread wide. And on your next exhale, let all the air go. Lower the body. Keep the elbows close by you. Uncurl your toes. Inhale. Look up. Cobra. Curl the toes. Exhale. Push to the knees. Lift the bottom. Down dog. All right, we only got two down dogs left. So we're gonna enjoy this one. Fingers are spread wide. Here we go. Right leg lifts. Bend the right knee. Bring the right foot through or grab the right calf. Bring it up, whatever you need to do. Get that leg up here. Right knee stacked over right ankle. Keep your left heel up. Slowly begin to rise. Do it slow so you don't get your balance off. Crescent lunge. Now you can see me from the side here first. Now I'm going to turn and face you, and I want, what I want you to notice is that my hips are facing forward. It's almost like right here, my belt loops. Crescent lunge does not flare our left hip out. Everything stays nice and square. Hands are stacked over shoulders, shoulders are stacked over hips, and hips are in line with each other, not flaring out. Crescent lunge, take the hands behind the back. We've been here before. Clasp your fingers, inhale, look up, pull the hands away from your bottom. Breathe. If having the neck up is too much, take the gaze back to center, but keep the hands away from your bottom. Crescent lunge, you've got this. Release the hands, bring them back up. Let me slide back around so we can finish out the right side. And now slowly take the hands down to the mat. Take the right foot, step it back. You're back in down dog. Told you we didn't have many left. There's this one and one more. Here we go, left leg lifts. Bend the left knee, bring it through and either grab the back of the left calf or just put the left foot up there, whatever you got. Keep your right heel lifted. When you're ready, rise up, crescent lunge. Gaze is straight ahead, right heel is lifted. You're actually pushing through the right heel. And what I want you to imagine, notice your left calf muscle. Notice your right thigh, kind of pull them toward each other. Now that sounds weird, Zip everything up. So you're pulling this calf back on the left side, pulling the right thigh up. Everything zipped up. Hands behind the back. Clasp your fingers. Pull them away from your bottom as you inhale and look up. Remember, if having the chin up is too much, you look straight ahead. But pull the hands away from your bottom, allowing the shoulders to roll slightly toward each other. Breathe. Balance inhales and exhales. Maybe it's just one beat and one beat. Whatever it is, it's got to be balanced. Hands go back up, and you've done it. Let's windmill the left, or both hands down. Take the left foot back, you're in down dog. From here, come onto your shins and have a seat. So knees come down, you're on the shins. Breath might be a little bit labored. We're gonna work on getting it really nice and balanced and steady before we leave our mats. So from where you are seated, I want you just to sit up nice and tall. You're sitting on the heels, you are breathing, Take the right hand out, push it like there's an imaginary wall next to you. Take the left hand, grab the right ear. Let's end with a really nice stretch right here. So we're pressing the right fingers way out as if there's a wall there. Feel the stretch from the shoulder all the way to the wrist, into the fingers. Allow the left ear to fall toward the left shoulder as you're hanging onto that right ear. I know it's a lot of left and right, but you got this. And release, bring the hands back down, roll the shoulders a couple times. Preparing for the other side. Left hand, press it out. Palm is open, fingers spread wide. Take the right hand, grab the left ear, pull it over so the right ear is coming toward the shoulder. Don't have to touch, just pull it that way. But the most important thing is keep pressing those right, or those, excuse me, those left fingers like there's a wall and you're pushing it away. Feel that beautiful stretch from the shoulder through the wrist, into the fingers, even to the back of the hand. 
and release. This time we roll the shoulders forward a few times. All right, bring the legs under, from underneath you, cross them, so come into Sukhasana, your easy seat. Just cross your legs, whatever way works for you. Hands are gonna be on the knees. We're gonna roll through some of those cat cows that we started with to end our practice. So sit up nice and tall, and on your next inhale, we breathe in from the belly. Let the belly fill with air, look up, lift the chest. Exhale, roll the shoulders toward the ears, chin toward the chest, arching the back. Inhale, link to cow, look up as the shoulders drop. Exhaling to cat, look toward the belly button as the chin drops. Three more. Cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And let's come back up, drop those shoulders. Sit up nice and tall. Bring your hands to heart center. Just bow your head slightly. Do exactly what you did in the very beginning. Thank yourself for drawing away from the world for just a few minutes. I'm blocking the energy that's sitting right there in the center of your body. That beautiful green light of Anahata, your heart chakra. The subtle energy that actually can become quite fierce when it's unblocked and it's flowing. Filling every cell of our body with prana, that life-giving force. Thank you for allowing me to spend these moments with you, tapping into our heart's energy, tapping into our spirit of gratitude. Namaste.